Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the exciting world of Goonies World. I am Ryan, also known as Mean, and uh, to my left is a man whose name is Sean, also known as Johnny Favreau. Yep, and he is a man. He is a man. Mr. Johnny Favreau on base. <laughs> <laughs> and directly across from me is another man. Whose name is Colin, also known as Goonie. Hello there. And today, on Goonie's World, we bring you part three of what's it called? God, God is, is a, a gun. gun. That's right. Well, where we stopped, you'd been surrounded by the Commandante's troops at the command of the German advisor, Colonel Crisp, who is here working with these Mexicans in Santa Cucaracha where you have inadvertently delivered a whole wagon load of repeating infield rifles to these German, well, to this German and his uh, Mexican cohorts. They surrounded you. They said they were going to wire south, to send a telegram south for, uh, for some money for you, but that you would be their guest in the meantime. But you were clearly prisoners. You were surrounded and marched off to the basement of this big Spanish mission, this old church that they've gutted and uh, assumed command of. And parts of it are still standing, and certainly the basement is, and that's where they march you. You can see where there are barrels here uh, and other storage, and it's cool and dark down here. But there is a small room with a heavy wooden door, and <laughs> laughing the Mexican guards roughly shove you into it and then hang all your gear on a hook outside the door just tantalizingly far enough away that you can see it through a small window set in the door that has three little iron bars and they lock it heavily and one of them says yeah hey, you just wait here until the German checks out your door yeah and the guard sits down on a stool outside the door and then you hear footsteps going away, the lights dim. There's no lights in your actual uh, little room that you're in, but there's a tiny little window up in the ceiling. It's like at ground level, and it's still daytime outside, and there's a little bit of light shining in. Again, the guard asleep outside your door. And So we... this uh, um, the, the room is like a... Like a st- like a stone foundation. That's right. The yeah. Okay. So it's not like it's not. It's a makeshift prison. Not. It's not like bars and everything everywhere. Right. Just a big heavy door. The little window in the door is barred, of course. Not that you right. could get out of it anyway. And so is the window up in the corner. Um, that's shining in a little light. But even that would be a squeeze to get out of. It's more of a ventilation hole than anything. But you can hear. Uh, the sounds of the village, you know, the chickens clucking and whatnot. And as you're looking around your cell, there's a shadow over that upper door. Psst. Psst. Who's there? What is it? Oh, is that, is that guy? It's me, Andres. So I met you outside earlier when you first came into the village. I told you not to get mixed up with the German. Sorry about that. Well, I, didn't, I, I didn't want to. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's hard not to get mixed up in things down here, south of the border. Everything is crazy. Listen, I want to help you, but we have to wait till dark. I don't know. I'm afraid to talk to you through this in the daytime. Somebody might see me looking in and talking to you. But Andres is here to help you. Well, now, this they don't say that they was going to... Uh, oh, the Germans going to check out our store and let us go. Uh, you really think he gonna pay you for these guns? Well, two gringos. I come, guess not. Come down south of the border. I think you'll be quiet. I think you will quietly disappear. Now, did you just call me a gringo? We talked about this a little bit before, but uh, I call you a gringo because you're from the United States, yes. And you're very clean. Okay, I've, I've been waiting all my life to be called a gringo. I could so. call you a Mexican if you want. <laughs> Well, it's better than in some of the names I've been called. I don't think that you have the heart of a Mexican. If you did, you would give those rifles to the peasants. You have seen how we have suffered under the General Huerta. Hello, Zaya! Hello, hello! Oh, I got to go! He runs off. I try to come back later! 
Well, I'm not waiting around for him to bust us out. Well, I don't know that we got much choice, but well, you got a plan? No. You got ideas? Do you well, think that guard I, right there speaks English? You don't. You get the feeling he doesn't. You get the feeling he does not speak English. You hope he doesn't. Right. I'm sure we can hatch a plan. Of course, you don't really have a, like an eye on him unless you get up and look through the little slot in the wooden door. But you can hear him shifting his weight in a little stool outside the door, sighing out of boredom. All I know is I can't stay here. Get busy living or get busy dying. That's what I will say. Well, we're not like tied up or anything. No, no, no. In fact, I mean, you got your clothes and things like that. You just don't have your your gun belts and your weapons and things like that. So if there's any creative use you might think of to make out of your clothing, it's about midday now. Well, Charlie, do you think we reckon we could take our clothes off and tie them together and make a rope and climb up to that window and get out? Well, you could probably stand on his shoulders to get up to the window something like that. You might not need to get naked, necessarily. Well, 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 don't ruin my fun. (laughs) (laughs) But you'd have to get the little bars out of that window. Might require that. Might make some noise. Now, but not impossible. So you said we're wearing clothes, but are are these were our original clothes? Yeah, they're your original clothes. They didn't take your boots or anything like that. What about belts? Well, they took your gun belts. Okay. So, if you got another belt, but you probably suspenders hold up your pants, not a belt. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. And a yeah. gun belt. Belts are for holding tools. Well, I'll just wear coveralls. That's it. That's right. I remember, you do have coveralls. Commando. Yeah. But like, but your it's true that your options are very, very limited, and the minutes tick by and tick by again. Now, I reckon we could probably, like, pretend like we was fighting or something, and then they come in here, but I, I don't know what they... That's not a terrible plan. Well, I don't know why they'd want to stop us. Yeah. What they care if we kill each other. They'd probably just make their jobs easier. Well, I guess we can see what that other Mexican has to offer, and then if we can't rely on him, then we'll... <laughs> Did they take my... Cursed bone? No. Yeah, I reckon these Mexicans might be superstitious. I might be able to waggle my finger bone at him. The guard. I don't know. Oh, that's always an option, I suppose. I just, I'm a bone waggler. <laughs> yes, I know that about you. Do you want to try to get his attention? You go ahead and wag that bone. All right. Stick um, it out the bars. Yeah, I'm going to stick it. I'm going to stick it out the bar and start like and gripping it tightly in case somebody tries to snatch it mm-hmm. away from me and start waggling <laughs> waggling it in the direction of the Mexican guard and I'm going to say mm, finger bone finger <laughs> bone curse the Apache on you Mexican guard why don't you uh, make a soul roll but make, it's hard because he doesn't really understand everything you're saying <laughs> so plus two is that yeah yeah well it's uh, it's minus two to the target number so instead of needing a six you'll need a four Oh like my! A ten, so. Which 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 would be a, a critical failure, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, he he. There's a bucket of pee down here, oh, and he he curls it at the door. Uh, make a body roll to get out of the way before you're drenched with pee. Do I have to? No. no you could be drenched with pee if you want. No. Okay, oh well, you dodge out of the way, but pee splatters in the room, and it stinks real bad for the rest of the afternoon. But uh, as as dusk approaches. Psst. It's Andres, he's back. Say, it's me, Andres. I told you I'll come back when night falls. Listen, they are getting ready to have a big party. There's some more Germans that came. In the afternoon, in another Rolls Royce. There are two nice, nice Rolls Royce. I want to take one and drive away. But I don't know where to get the petrol. Listen, they're having a big party. What do you want me to do? I'm here to help you. Well, the keys would be nice. This... Get your hands on the keys and let us out. Oh, I thought you meant the keys to the Rolls Royce. <laughs> well, if you have those, that would be a good way to get get the hell out of Mexico. Well, I, I don't know if I, I see if I can come down there and uh, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Maybe. I, I don't know. Could uh, you 
pretend to be a shift change guard or something? I don't know. Oh, they all know, Andres. They all know, Andres. But but how, how should I try to get the keys? Well, this this god, he has to sleep some. Y'all drink tequila. Oh, I love tequila. Mm. I've been drinking it all afternoon. Hey, maybe I'll bring the guard some tequila. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes, I think that would work just fine. Oh. Oh, wait, I got a better idea. I got a better no, idea. No, you don't. That's... <laughs> Okay, what is it? Well, he actually shoves a bar of tequila down through the little windows, reaches his arm all the way down, but he yells real loud, Hey, I brought you some tequila! And just immediately the door <laughs> opens. The guard's got his gun trained on you. Charlie, get the tequila. We got to drink it. Nope, you'll bring that tequila over here. I will drink it, says the guard. <sighs> well, that's not fair. He didn't bring it for you. He's a fool. We do not need a prisoner to drink a tequila. Give it here. Well, I'm going to take the bottle uh, from Andreas and uh, walk over as though I'm going to give it to the guard. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to bash him in the head with it. All right. Make a body roll. You bash him in the head. Oh. And I what you're, I assume your intent is to knock him the fuck out, right? Yes. Yeah. And <laughs> being a mook, he's not a dodger. And he cries out and he slumps to the ground. Of course, the door to your cell is still open. Close it fast. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I say it's 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 almost dark outside right now. I mean, it's, it's deep purple, and uh, <laughs> and well, I'm gonna grab his gun and my shit off the hook. All right, throw Charlie his stuff. All right, you guys buckle on your guns. <laughs> Charlie had one of the new repeating rifles too, because he took it during the, the train robbery, mm-hmm. and. Uh, all right, now what do you do? Now you're in the basement of the place. Your wagon, of course, it's under, not lock and key, but they've got it over by the tank and, and, and all that. They've got access to the guns. You could save your lives and run off. Now, uh, I wasn't listen to, listening to exactly what you just said. That's okay. Um, did um, So we got our everything back. Mm-hmm. And, um, what is the, the guard wearing he's wearing the mexican army uniform kind of a beige okay uh, uniform he's wearing so he's probably not wearing like a sombrero or no anything. no he's not wearing a sombrero okay. andres is wearing a sombrero but he's outside yeah maybe you can get him to pass it down to you <laughs> he's not going to fit through the little bars smash it up no you can't smash up his sombrero they're well, just not <laughs> ambitious enough what do you want me to do they're going to notice if i keep hanging around outside Talking to the window to you. I need something to cover my. I mean, I am. I do have a cowboy hat, but that could be seen uh, as standing out differently than what someone else is. I don't know. Wearing. You're in the basement of a Spanish mission, man. Why don't you try to find some robes? Let's. Okay. And and I'd be out here waiting for you. That sounds like an idea. Okay. Don't forget, Andres is your friend. If you say so. He will get a reward for helping you. So I've got my revolver back. Oh, yes. And the guards I and grabbed the, And the well. guards. Well, he didn't have a revolver. He had a rifle. Oh, yeah. shit. Okay. So you've got his rifle. It's not a. It's not a. one of the new repeater the rifles. Nice, the yeah. nice ones, yeah. Yeah. But it's a rifle. And uh, like he, that's not a terrible idea. It is the basement of a, of a mm-hmm. Spanish mission. And uh, you could rummage around and see if there's anything down here. You might be able to use some old priest's vestments or, or, or something. Once you, uh, once yes, you make I- a mind roll as you rummage through the place, as, as you recall, there are a lot of barrels and boxes down here in, uh, in the rest of the basement, not in this little room you're in. Ooh. Oh, critical success. Oh. In fact, you find <clears throat> the perfect thing. and uh, I find nothing, but... You find nothing, but you find... Charlie... An old uh, Dominican friar's robe, like an old monk's robe with the, the, full, the hood and, and everything. And, uh, in fact, there's several of them. Eventually, you can find one that fits. But still called black friars, you know, the, the black robes with the hood. Straight out of the medieval world. That would certainly hide your yes, skin. Yes, I, I need to uh, create uh, the illusion of, of shadow. All right. And uh, like I say, well, uh, he's not really close to his shift change yet. So you guys think you, what do you do? You're in the basement of the 
the church. <clears throat> well, I guess we should put these on and see if we can sneak out. Yeah. But you can hear music in the distance and the sounds of a fiesta. And even a little bit of accordion music uh, that the Germans have brought. A little polka action and you can hear some German laughter as well. A little cross-cultural shenanigans happening up in the... Uh, it's probably set up in the, uh, uh, the old sanctuary of the church. It's where they would have the most room to do that. It's the only place you haven't been into and seen yet. But, again, you're just inferring that from the distant sound that's coming, drifting down here into the basement. Now that you're wearing your monk's robes, heavily armed underneath, of course. We should probably uh, gag and tie up this god for when he wakes up. Yeah, he's still snoring from being bashed over the head, and you drenched with tequila as well. So, is there any thing to tie him up with down here? Well, there's other robes. There's also the closets that the robes were in, you know. So. Yeah. But yeah, you could rip, strip off bits of uh... Plus, it's a, uh, you know, they keep people prisoner down here. There's probably some links of chain, you know, and things like that around. Not too hard to find things to tie him up with if that's what you want to do. Yeah, and then gagging with some of the other robes. <laughs> Alright, where do you... Shove him in the closet. Shove him. Alright, Robe closet. Boom, boom, boom. All right, now, alone down here. So far, no one has come down yet, but you're not sure exactly when the shift change is. You just know that guy been down here for about five and a half hours or so. Now, Charlie, I don't have a good plan, but I got half a mind to just storm out of here, guns blazing. Well, that, that sounds like it came from half a mind, because you're going to get killed. Well, well, gonna both get killed. Might. It's true. Now, I say we sneak around. I say we've tried to find some sort of vehicle out of here. Maybe one of I mean, one of the vehicles has the keys in it. Wait, there's a tank outside, right? A, pa- a, a Panza? They've got a Panza. They've got a Panza. And they've got these two Rolls Royces. Uh, that are all all German. Um, oh, oh, uh, Rolls Royce is British company. Well, I mean, they're own. They've got oh, the Germans, or yeah. yeah. And uh, in fact, they'll probably they're probably destined to be gifts for the Mexicans. But right now, this detachment of Mex of Germans who's come in from elsewhere during the afternoon while you were in jail has supposedly come into this party. But you don't even know exactly where those things are unless it's up by where the Panzer was. You'd have to go outside to see. Can't hide in the basement. Forever. Now we might be able to get that tank. I don't know if it's a two-man though. Well, we certainly can cause quite a ruckus from the tank, and that might leave. Uh, that might allow us to escape in some other fashion. We can't certainly drive away with the tank. And the other question is, do you want to escape with anything but your lives? You had the guns, and that was how you were going to make your mm-hmm. your fortune. I mean, I think I, I, don't, sure, I, I think Snakefinger Jones would be happy just to get yeah, out. Alive. I think uh, that's probably Charlie's main goal. But if there's an opportunity for escaping with money or guns, that that would be nice. Mm, well. I'll let you guys worry about getting out now. You're still, of course, crouched in the basement planning. Do we... Okay. So we really haven't even, like, kind of... Well, we've been up out there before, but... Yeah, you got a big view of the big back of the church where there's a a cleared-off area where all the Mexicans were. There was a Panzer tank and a Rolls-Royce out there. But you don't know, you know, other than that. All right. Well, I think we need to sneak upstairs and uh, kind of... Look and out windows and see what's going on. Get a lay of the land. Yep. All right. Mm-hmm. And, and and Andres can probably factor into your plan somehow. Um, and he's a good, uh, uh, you know, go between with the peasants in general, who you know hate these ooh, guys. Ooh, I have an idea. <clears throat> but 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 finding him and communicating with him would also entail leaving the building. But what's oh, your he idea? left? Well, he was never in here. He was well, just talking no, to you but through, I, the, through the window, right? But I mean, did he leave the window? Oh, you mean talk to him right now? I guess you could go up there. I 
you know, I, I don't know. I got a finger. You guys have been standing here talking for a while. I don't think he's going to be lingering over there still. All right. He was already pushing it, getting nervous. All right, well, I'm going to just... But, but that doesn't mean you can't find him and discuss your idea. Well, I'm going to take the rifle, the guard's rifle, mm-hmm. and <clears throat> put, like push it up out the little window where Andreas was, mm-hmm. and then sneak up, up, the, up the stairs. Okay. What are you doing? I'm going upstairs, and I'm going to get a lay of the land. All right. You guys walk up the stairs into a back hallway in the church, and you can hear coming through the wall the sounds of a big party. You're in a hallway that runs directly on the other side of the wall of the sanctuary, where they all must be gathered and they're having their fiesta. And there's a hallway that goes out onto kind of a, a, a ramada, you know, a covered walkway that would lead outside. You can also get in stairs get into stairs going up in the upper levels of the church. There's a choir loft that overlooks the sanctuary, like a balcony where the choir w- would sing back in the day. And the stairway to get there is also in this hallway. And I think I know you want to get outside. Yes, and ideally without being seen. Yes, well, no one can... S- there's no one in here, and you don't have a view of this party. You can only hear it coming through the wall. If you guys want to go outside, you would go in the opposite direction from where the stairs are. And there's no one to see you at this moment, but I assume when you creep out onto... Because you have to walk around the church. The exit to get outside is on the other side of the building from where your gun is that you just pushed up outside of the cell window. So as you guys walk out onto the Ramada, the Ramada I'm sure you'll be ever so careful. Why don't you both make body rolls as you... Tiptoe along in your heavy black robes. Got on it. Like the shadows themselves, you glide along the darkened areas of the Ramada in your old Dominican Ramada. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you uh, glide along in the shadows, and you can see that there are several guards. I mean, they're not stopping and staring at specific spots, but they're milling around outside. You can see in the distance, once you get up around the corner to what would be the back of the church, you can see there's some more semi-ruined buildings back there, and you can see where the Panzer is, and the two Rolls Royces are parked, and your wagon with all the guns is also back there behind the Panzer. And that's across a courtyard from you. It's strewn with little rocks and rubble and things like that. And if, as you turn to the right, you're walking behind the church. Well, I don't know if that's where you turn, but if you want to get to your gun out the window, that's where you would have to go. Now there are windows looking into the sanctuary where the party is. They were made of beautiful stained glass, but a lot of the panes of stained glass have been broken out. And you can see in there. And you can see at a high table, the Germans are sitting with these great big beer steins. And they're laughing at all the entertainment. There are loose women of the village who have chosen to uh, fraternize with all these soldiers. Who are in here giggling and laughing, sitting on laps, getting beer poured on them. Uh, Quite a big party. The Commandante is in there as well as Colonel Crisp and these other Germans. But as you walk past the windows, it's very unlikely they might look out. But please make body rolls again to be extra stealthy. I'm sure you don't want... Well, it's not a total critical failure, but... But it's a critical success. But we have a critical success over here, and you make it all the way over to the other edge. Meanwhile, though, you're just okay. walking past... Trip over I, my robes. Yeah, and when I say you, I should specify who gets all the way over the edge. I mean Stinkfinger. On the other hand, you don't trip over your robes, Charlie, but when you get right past a window, a shadow immediately lo- looks out the window and is looking both ways. And you, I imagine, are... Bl- blend- uh, what are you doing? Uh, well, I'm gonna do I try to avoid being seen before he pokes his head yes. out the window. If I'm, I'm sure I'm aware that I made some noise. Yeah, so I'm yeah. going to. That's what he noticed. Immediately, duck or get to the side of the window or something. Flatten yourself up yeah. against the wall. Well, 
he uh, this is a uh, this is one of the Mexican soldiers. He sticks his head out a little bit, looks around, but he doesn't see you bathed in shadow. And sticks his head back in, and their music continues, and you go and join Stinkfinger. You're on the opposite side of the church now, the side where the window from your cell was. And also, this is a site where you could see a lot more of the village and the bridge that leads over the Rio Grande in the distance. And your gun is still laying there, but there are a few more soldiers milling around. So far, no one's noticed you because you're right up against the side of the church. But you make it all the way over to the gun, and you can pick it up. And these guards, like I say... The only reason they haven't seen you is because they haven't looked right over here and you're wearing black robes in shadows. But you can see them milling around in the streets, talking to each other, smoking cigarettes, things like that. There are, of course, peasants further down in the village, but it's night, so you just see their vague shadows walking around and the windows from their little adobe huts and so on and so forth. That's where you find yourself at the moment. Andreas is not standing out here right this second. What do you guys do? Where are... Where's the tank? The tank is... You're on... Picture... You're on one... You just left the building and walked in a U-shape. So essentially behind you. And of course, they didn't have it just sitting out there unguarded. You know, there are people milling around. Could I tell approximately how many? Well, you have to walk back down there and get another look. I shall do that. All right. All right, I assume you're sticking to the shadows. Now that you're moving again out here, I want you, again, make body rolls to be stealthy because there are guards just milling around, standing generally within sight, but you're both super stealthy. You peek around the corner of the building. They look like there are about a dozen men, not just right on the tank, but in the vicinity of the tank and the wagon full of guns and the two Rolls Royces. And they're laughing and smoking cigarettes, but they don't look drunk. You said a dozen? About a dozen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, 11, 14, something in there. Right. They move around a little bit. <coughs> well, maybe they... <clears throat> maybe we ought to get them drunk, because they don't appear to be drunk. Well, I don't have anything to get yes. them drunk with. But uh, our Mexican friend might be able to help us with that, if we can find him. I'll look around to see if I can spot Andreas anywhere. Well, he he's he doesn't seem like he's anywhere out here, but again, it's dark. You might want to go back over towards where the peasant houses were and look around for him there. Yes, I think we need to uh, collaborate with him for a uh, getaway. All right. Well, there was an old cantina in town. When you first met him, he was sitting in the alley outside the cantina. He talked to you when you were on your way in. And if you leave the church grounds proper and head into the village you are noticed by peasants but they don't raise a hue and cry they know full well there aren't any monks uh, at the mission anymore but you get a look from them as you walk past it's half surly and half curious and maybe even a touch hopeful when you get back to the alley Andres is just coming out of the alley arranging himself like he's just pissed in the alley. And he goes, oh, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I have pissed in an alley. Well, I got you. I got you a rifle if you want it. Oh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. How about all those other rifles? Give them to my brothers and sisters. We'll put off this army. Hmm. That sounds like a good plan. You are a very brave man. Now, if we can get to that tank, uh, and one of us can drive it, the other can get the guns to the people. Do you know how to drive it? That great metal beast? Well, not exactly. Well, how hard could it be, though, eh, for intelligent gringos such as yourselves? Yes, how hard can it be? I would love to see the tank make a big boom. Andres would love it. What do you need Andres to do? Well, all my brothers and sisters maybe, and cousins will all help us. Well, the, it, the tank is heavily guarded, it looks like. Yes, I counted maybe 11 to 14 men <laughs> myself. And it doesn't appear that they are inebriated. 
Oh no, they're on punishment detail. They do not get to go to the fiesta. But I suppose they would love to have them some alcohol, nonetheless. And everybody loves to have some alcohol. I, I don't know, maybe they would like to break the rules. Maybe quiet. Mm-hmm. Maybe have some flasks passed around or something. Maybe maybe even s- something special inside the tequila. Well, that will be a problem. Because in order to get the tequila, we have to go to the cantina. But the cantina, the man who runs the cantina is my father-in-law, Marcelo. Marcelo do not think much of Andres. <sighs> Ever since my poor wife died, he hates the sight of me. You will have to go and talk to Marcelo and get the tequila. But don't tell him you're friend with me. Well, is he... <coughs> how... Uh, how does he feel about um, Mexico, Mexican politics? He think everyone should keep their head down. Well, I don't know if that's going to help us, but... Well, how bad do you want the tequila? Well, how bad do you want your father-in-law to stay alive? Oh, don't kill myself. Well, I hope not to he don't have mean, to. He, he's not a bad man. He just miss his daughter, so he hates me. Because I take him, I took the baby away from him, and then she died. Because I did not have a, I did not have a good provide for her. I did not provide good for her. That is what he feels. Well, I got an idea, and it might be stupid, but my, well, they usually are when I have them. But how about you take that rifle that I put out there outside that window? Uh huh. Oh yes. And you go on the top of a building somewhere and snipe one of them guards. And then run away, and that'll attract them over there to see what's going on. And then we can steal the tank. Okay, but I don't know if necessarily every single one of them is going to run over. Maybe I could climb up into the church. I don't know, I'm not a very good shot, though. But I guess I don't have to hit anybody, right? I just have to shoot the gun, yeah? (laughs) Well, you, you would have to at least... Get it somewhat close so, so they I, know you're a, they're actually being so shot at. So are you saying you want me to shoot someone and not go talk to Marcelo and get tequila? No, I that was his idea. I I'm Well, well his idea is much quicker. Yes, uh that's one way to handle it, but possibly more exciting. Possibly. But when I shoot gun and everyone inside a party may be here. Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, maybe not, though, because the music very loud. Yes, that's true as well. I think um, it might draw some of them, as you said, away, but not all of them. We're still going to have to deal with the ones that stayed. And well, a half, done is, half dozen is easier to deal with than a dozen. Yes, but I think alcohol should play a part somehow. Well, then you got to talk to Marcelo. Well, I'm fine with that. Okay, but don't tell him you know me. I won't mention your... Why don't we try to combine these plans and get them drunk and then shoot them? I, I think that's the best way to I would love a chance it. to shoot one. Well, let's go. Let's go to the cantina then. Okay, I will climb in the church tower. I hope I am not noticed. All well, right. you guys push your way into the I cantina. Cute cantina music. Normally, this place is full of the Mexican soldiers. Have taken over the place, but not tonight. They're all up at the big piazza to welcome the Germans, and so there's just a couple of sad and surly peasants in here, and sitting on a behind a bar, which is just a board stretched across a couple of barrels, is an old man with snowy white hair. He hasn't gone bald at all. He's still got tons of it, but it's just poofy white hair contrast against his really wrinkled dark skin. He's very sad sitting there behind a poncho. But he looks up, raises an eyebrow when two Dominican monks walk into uh, his cantina. And, uh... uh, He says, and the other couple peasants in there look your way. Bless you. Well, so, I want to buy a bunch of tequila for them soldiers out there. They look sad. You are the gringos. Well, yeah. Yeah. I thought they put you in the basement. Yeah, well, we got out. Yeah, uh, on but they don't know that yet. We're on religious uh, break. Well, we're having a pilgrimage. If I help you, they will kill the whole village. 
Everyone will be killed. That's why I tell my no good son in law you got to keep your head down. This is no place for heroes. You you won't be helping us. We're we're actually helping them. You you we're giving them tequila, because the gods deserve a a nice uh, break. I don't want to give them tequila for nothing. Well, they'll certainly be thankful to you, and you'll get to keep your head. Oh, well, you're going to get them shooting, and then they come and kill all of us, and you'll start no, no, something no. and run away and not finish, and all the peasants will suffer. No, they'll they'll just get drunk and they'll piss themselves and fall asleep. Well, what are you going to do when these guards get, get themselves so drunk? You're going to rob them and then run away and leave us to suffer. Well, actually, my plan was to commandeer that their tank and blow them all to hell. And we've got a plan to get guns to you. Ooh. There's there's a whole cart of guns. At this point, the other peasants, so this early sad peasants who are sitting in the cantina, they can't help themselves. They get up with these hopeful looks on their faces and come kind of join this huddle. And you can tell the second you said get guns to them, Marcelo's eyes narrow and he smiled a little bit in spite of himself. Says, so why don't you tell us about this plan? If we had guns, then nobody could ever take advantage of the people of Santa, C- Santa Cucaracha ever again. Well, we done brought a whole cart full of them. Mm-hmm. But first, we've got to get a tank. But the cart is right close to oh, the tank. Oh, you are going to need a lot of tequila. Oh, yes. He reaches under the bar and starts bringing out these great earthenware jugs. Six big jugs. That are, these ought to be enough for 11 to 14 men. I think so. They got, like, the triple X's on the side of them. You know, this is a special recipe from my grandmother. Don't let Andres have any of this. He's worthless. Well, we can't exactly take it to him now. Hey, you two, you two boys. Pablo, Escobar. You <laughs> run up to the... Go give this to the guards. Give them the tequila with my compliments. Tell them it's Marcelo. Very happy they do not shoot up the place again. Okay, yes. So what is your plan to get the guns to us? Uh, well, a distraction caused by the tank, I think, should do it. We have to be ready to seize the guns. Oh, yes. It should ought to be, yep. Can you give us 30 minutes? It'll probably take about that long for them to all get drunk enough for us to take, okay. take I, the tank. I'm going to close up shop. You can hide in here if you need to. Here is key. I am rushing all of a sudden. <laughs> Here is the key. I will get. I will get my cousins and my brothers and their nephews and all of the f- family together, and we will get the guns. All right. What is the signal? Well, I guess when we hear the Panzer, there'll be a, there'll be a gunshot first. Oh, just a single gunshot. And that's that's gonna be our signal to take the tank. Okay, got it. And he he snuffs a few lamps, leaves one candle burning on a table, and rushes off joyfully into the village to rouse the peasants. So, Meanwhile... Are, are there windows? I assume there are windows in here. We can, like, oh, yes. watch what's going on with these guards. Oh, sure, the course sure. of the next, you know, half hour. Well, what you see is uh, they. there's a little bit of a discussion amongst themselves, amongst the guards themselves, probably about whether they're going to actually take it. But they do. And they begin drinking amongst themselves. And uh, are, we, are we the only ones... When he closed yeah, shop, he closed did, the whole place up. Yeah, well, the other guys left to go bring deliver the tequila. Okay. So yeah, you're alone in here. Pablo and Escobar. Pablo and Escobar. They they did a good job, and they they've they've delivered their tequila. They run off, giving you guys a thumbs up through the window. <laughs> and uh, after about twenty minutes, you see two of the guards start to dance a little jig together, dance around in a circle. But you see, there is one, now that you've been staring at them for a while, the hatch of the pans are opens, and a German rears his head out and looks down at the Mexicans dancing around and being drunk and shakes his head in disgust. The Mexicans? Well, the guards who are dancing around are Mexicans. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Right. Oh, the Mexi- oh, okay. I thought they were all Oh, no. Yeah. No, there's only one German guard. In- well, and you didn't even know he was there. Got it. And okay. he was in the tank, though. But he shakes his head and, like, rolls his eyes and yells at them to be quiet 
and uh, I don't know what be quiet is in German, but you can tell what he means. Heart smart! Yes. And he slams the the lid <laughs> and goes back into the panzer. So your extended surveillance has revealed at least one non-drunk soldier who is a German who is inside the panzer. In fact, it's very pregnant with tension. It's been about 25 minutes or so. Okay, so... Hmm. Um... Another five minutes, they might be fast asleep. <laughs> There's there definitely more than one dancing. The other ones are laughing at the ones who are dancing. Some of them have gotten out some pesos and are starting to gamble. Well, they're definitely distracted. Oh, yes. So I'm going to take this opportunity to sneak over to the tank as close as I feel comfortable getting. Like, if I can sort of use it to, to conceal myself from them. I'm not sure how they're arranged. I mean, assume they're they're kind of clustered together around the alcohol and everything. So Yes, but what's directly behind the tank is the, your wagon. So there's definitely... Uh, there's nobody right behind the tank. Coming in at it from that angle will give you a lot of cover, you know, under the wheels of your wagon or whatever else. Okay, and I'm... <clears throat> so, so, do I need to, like... Oh, yeah, not a, yeah if you don't want to... Somebody know it. They're drunk, but you know, they're going to notice. Uh, right. um, oh, well, that's going to be a luck point. Yeah, I think we want to spend a luck point rather than have a critical failure. And you almost get the sense that the guy inside the panzer is trying to sleep or doesn't want them bugging him in there. Okay, well, that's much better, much better that time. Oh, yes, you're absolutely silent as you creep up. Now, you're behind your wagon now, kind of crouched. You get a look past the wheel, and you can see the back of back end of the tank. And there's two guys, their backs are sort of to you, they're playing cards. They're sort of side on, they could maybe see you from their peripheral vision if they were looking. But they're the only ones in direct eyesight of you. The rest of them are outside of your line of sight on the other side of the Panzer or the Rolls Royces. So there's only two that would even maybe see you right this second. Okay, now can I come around the back side of the cart towards the what I'm assuming is the rear of the tank and place myself sort of either in between the cart and the tank or around the corner and from, not from where those other guys are so yeah. you're not on the same side yeah easily you just creep to the left and at this point though any sound they're going to notice so That's hopefully him. you won't run out of luck too soon ooh Right on it, right on it. So again, now meanwhile, while you're making that slow creep, you're still, I'm assuming, Charlie, you're still peering out from the cantina. And what are you doing, if anything? You just waiting for his signal, or do you have another idea? Um, would I have time to get or to the bell tower or whatever, wherever the max, the... Andreas? Well, you have as much time as you want. I don't know about any specific timed plan that you guys even have. I think you're playing it pretty fast and loose. Because I would like to tell him our plan, even though I'm not exactly sure what uh, Stinkfinger is well, working, doing. Well, working with Stinkfinger is always a, <laughs> yeah, He's a little unpredictable. Yeah. Well, yeah, do you want to try to rush over to where the... I mean, you're going to have to kind of walk out in the open to get over there, but if you're casual and sneaky, maybe they won't notice you get to the base of the church tower. Yeah. Why don't you go for it? Yeah, you got luck in anyway. Yeah, you got luck. Oh, oh gonna need there, I think we're going to need that <laughs> luck. We are throwing around more critical sneaking failures. Marking off a luck point. That is more like it. You get to the... Crit fail and ride on it, just like, just like Sting Finger. Yeah, that is two coincidences. But you get to the base of the church tower and climb up. <clears throat> and uh, just as your head broaches the where you get up to where the bell is, just as your head comes over, you're, don't move or I'll blow your head off. It's me. Oh, oh, oh. Hello, gringo. Charlie Branson. What are you doing here, Charlie Branson? I just saw your friend. He snuck up behind the tank. I watch everything like eagle. That's good. I wanted to make sure now, you... Did I see Charlie... 
make that clear? I don't I don't know it would have been out of line of sight okay. I don't know that you were looking for it yeah you were, you were kind of maybe busy sneaking fair, yeah. yeah yeah fair enough yeah I wanted to make sure you were keeping an eye out and let you know there's a German inside that tank and when I know I saw him pop up and tell the other to be quiet good so make sure you blow his head off right when you get the chance well I, I, I do my best all right. I mean, I don't know. Are you going to make him pop up again? Well, we, we're when we ha- we're gonna get that tank, so he's gotta come out somehow. Okay, I shoot him if he come out. Yes. And just m- seconds later, because this was actually exactly what I was planning on doing anyway. But and unbeknownst to me, I have no idea Charlie's mm-hmm, gone mm-hmm. up here and, and, and done this. But just seconds later, yeah, I, you were right in the middle of action. I was just gonna quietly like. Knock on the on the side of the tanks, just so I, I know the German yeah. could well, hear me and, may, and think maybe it was one of the Mexicans and uh, wanting something. Almost before you're even done knocking, the thing just blasts open. Not blasts open, he slams it open, <laughs> and he this German stands and he goes, "I told you to be quiet." And uh, I'm gonna let you roll for Andreas, whose body score is. Six. Okay, it's better than mine. Yeah. All right. Oh, and he three tags the German. His head, top of it, just boosh, clean off. Unfortunately, you get a little red mist on the face there. Stink Ooh, finger. Jackie Kennedy going on over here. And then it's then it's on. The music from the party fades out rather quickly. You can hear confused screaming. From inside well, I, the church. As soon as that happens, I'm jumping up, up, up on and pulling this German out. and Yeah, he's so heavy. Make a body roll to pull him up out of there. Meanwhile. Fuck. Oh. Gonna have to make a, another luck. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> all right. Well, all the, yeah. Oh, you're gonna go for it again. Yep. Uh, no more luck and for the, me. The worst thing is happening. It'll delay. Jesus. Barely. You're out of luck, but you get this big blonde Prussian, you know. Uh, yanked up out of this tiny hatch and do your best to jump in. I mean, want to throw him onto oh. this Mexican soldiers. Yeah, okay, that's a good I idea. Slide down just to. Well, the two who are sitting right by the, there by the tank, squatting there playing cards. They just they just get a Prussian in the face, knocks him over. They roll around. Meanwhile, of course, there's the sound. They can't react instantly, but you know, in the big the fiesta is over, party's over. From your vantage point, Charlie, up in the bell tower, you can see this kind of quiet flood of Mexican peasants running up through the back of the village, you know, all uh, crouch running uh, towards the wagon where the guns are. <laughs> and uh, and meanwhile, down below you, people start streaming out of the church. I mean, dozens of Mexican soldiers. Uh what are you doing, Charlie, when you see that? They're all streaming out into the courtyard that the Panzer's in. I'm going to run with them. All right. Well, you charge down. I'm one of you now. You charge. <laughs> well, you got to charge down the church stairs right. to run out I'm with the crowd. jump off the tower. No. <laughs> that would be a long jump. <laughs> I love the idea. <laughs> but you can do like um, a, a, um Assassin's Creed, where they jump off uh, into like a, into a hay, hay barrel. Bale, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually, I'd say there's a 50 50 chance there probably is a thing of hay down there. Well, you, I've got luck, so. Why don't you see if there's a thing of. You haven't blown all yours yet. Yeah, yeah, I mean, let's just see if you look. When you look down, do you see some hay there? Even or odd? Even there's hay. Hey, there's hay. You want to do it? You want to go for it? Yes. All right, Charlie leaps off the church tower. I need to roll. Um, I'm sure I do. Yeah, you need to make a body roll to land in the hay. And sailing down through. Now this you see. And you're jumping down into the... Yeah! All right, and boosh, you land in the hay. You come up right behind at least two dozen Mexican soldiers who have run out of the party. (laughs) I, I raise my rifle in the air and run with the peasants. All right, and meanwhile, you are in the tank. Yeah, and I'm trying to figure out the controls, like... Make a mind roll, Stinkfinger. Hey! He figures it out. And Stinkfinger's maybe not the brightest, you know, but this, this seems pretty easy to... You think you get the eyes. This one a, makes these... This one makes these go. This makes this side the go. There's yeah. a rumble as the, 
the engine of this tank kicks in, and spitting and uh, choking, and in the deep, heavy rumble, and you got it up and running. What do you do with it? I'm gonna point it at the at the the uh, Fiesta. Okay. The second the, uh, the the turret starts to move, all the guys who are running in front of you, all the, the soldiers, not the peasants, um, they see it turning, and they start screaming and shooting and the peasants behind you they start screaming and shooting and this massive battle erupts before you even even mean for it to happen once the two sides notice each other once they see the tank moving all hell breaks loose and what do you do now that you're shooting it at the church I'm gonna f- yeah alright and uh, there again the soldiers are pouring out of the church and you ooh, fire this gun go for it well, it kicks back, and it, it, the shot sails way over the church and to the side. In fact, barely misses the, the steeple, and there's a kind of a, a howling arc of the projectile as it flies off. But you definitely got the sense of how it works now. There's a stack of projectiles you can keep. You got to drop it down into the hopper. Yeah. But now, uh, can um, is there? Do I have like? Elevation control? Yeah. Like a little wheel or something I can yeah. turn to like lower the... the yes, yeah, so you're going to have to lower it. And, uh, and of course, I don't know if you really want to destroy the church or destroy the guys, but they're going to have to rebuild that church anyway. Meanwhile, you are rushing in with a crowd of peasants, and you guys just kind of crash into melee with the soldiers. What do you do? There's at least two soldiers right on you, two big Mexicans. I will shoot with my right. All right. And they're in pretty close range, but, you know, you're shooting at them as they're charging in towards you. you begin to brandish their sabers. No. Oh, no, you missed. Do you want to use luck on that? No. All right. They rush in, and one of them swings at you with a saber, and he's going to hit you unless you duck out of the way. And you do, and the other one stabs at you, and he's not going to hit you. And... Meanwhile, you've got the thing lowered down. There's peasants fighting soldiers all around you. The peasants are getting the worst of it, but there's a little bit more of them than there are soldiers. And I assume, now that you've got it lowered and you think you've got it where you want it, why don't you hit that again? Yeah, I want to... I mean, I don't care to destroy the church necessarily, um, unless there's a bunch of them in there. So much as There's still a bunch of them in there. Okay, well... About half of them are still in there. I'll be happy to let it... To let it... This time you lowered it down too far and it tears into the ground right in front of the church, but the projectile does explode. There's about a half dozen soldiers' bodies and one peasant. You see fly up into the air a bunch of body parts and dust and debris rains down all over the battle. Meanwhile, these two guys are still on you and they're going to stab you again, but what do you do? I'll try to, uh... Because they're right up in melee with you now. You might have to hit them with the rifle. Cold yeah. cock them. You... All right. Bam! You do. In fact, um... Okay, yeah. That's, uh... You hit one, and they just take... Boom! Busts his nose Good open. Night. And the other one swings his saber at you and misses! And let's just get one more counterattack from you right now while you're getting the other projectile in and loaded. Oh, change the elevation again a little higher. Yeah, meanwhile, Andres is up there laughing like a maniac, firing left and right into the crowd. And the peasants are bravely... They're stabbing with... They've got some of the guns, but they didn't have a chance to open all of them and load them. So they're basically just using them as clubs at this point. Why don't you eat my butt? <laughs> and he does. Oh, and he does. His teeth are shattered and he falls to the ground. Meanwhile, you've got the other projectile in. Maybe third time's a charm and... Oh, just... Yeah. Boom! The whole front wall of the church goes up. Stones fly everywhere, all over the courtyard. There's a few people hit, including peasants who are hit as well. Um, but the whole front side of the church just crumbles down. And you hear this, Oh, no! From the bell tower is Andre. Oh, I forgot he was up there. <laughs> God damn it. Andre's in the whole bell tower crashes into the yard and even one of the great stones from the top smashes right into the hood one of those super nice Rolls Royces my god says a German voice but there's total chaos and confusion now and what are you doing 
No, these two guys I was in. Oh, they're both with. down. All right. But there's still kind of a swirling battle all around you, but no one is, like, directly engaging with you right this second. I'm going to swipe one of those sabers and all keep right. running towards the gun cart. All right, all right. You grab the saber and rush off towards the gun cart where the peasants are kind of hurriedly doing their best to crack open these things and get them loaded and they're handing off guns. What do you do? Um, okay, well, I just wanted to make sure that that's... Like, I didn't know if they were there yet. Um, yeah, like I said, they they were they're kind of using their them as clubs mostly yeah. now because they, they've they got a separate ammunition box and the guns aren't loaded and that kind of thing. But uh, as, just as you run up there, though, three Germans from the party who have rushed out who are still together, who know a thing or two, they go straight for the gun cart. And they go, hey, dude, hey, hey, as they see you jumping up onto it. And they rush right towards you as the obvious leader. What do you do? Uh, well, um, I will try to defend the cart. Okay. They come crashing. No, are they coming from the church? Yeah, yeah. Well, that, I'm, I'm, I'm also going to try to run them over, too. Well, okay, well, you can, can. Start, you can start getting moving, but, I mean, they're, during all that big battle, you're going to be driving out into a battle. They've rushed out here. To secure the guns on purpose. I don't. Now that they've come over here, I don't believe that you can co-op, you know, stop them from doing it. You can start driving over people here in a second, but uh, I shot one of them. All right. He goes down. There's still two left. They both fire their lugers at you, and the first one hits you unless you. Oh, they both hit you unless you can dodge both of those. Meanwhile, the Panzer lurches into motion. Go ahead and make your dodge rolls. Meanwhile, the Panzer lurches into motion, and you start. Driving what around the battlefield, aiming at Germans. I was just going to aiming at. I was going. Yeah, I mean, I, I accomplished my primary goal of, of you know taking the church out. Now I'm just going to start running over combatants that are well, you know, army. Yeah, the peasants are doing their best to rush out of the way once they realize what you're doing. And there's uh, meanwhile, you dodge both. I dodge right? both. All right, and. Uh, they're, they're going to run up and try to run up onto the wagon with you. Do you want to let them do that, or do you want to jump off and fight them before they get here? Uh, I will jump off and fight them. That's awesome. Do you want to attack both of them at the same time? You have to roll three or less, or you can just attack one. I will try to do the more cinematic. I, I agree. I, I think that's great. I hope you roll a three or less. Yeah. Hey, oh. it's a three. What do you know? And, yeah, you clothesline both of them, you know, with the jump. And boom, boom, boom. They go down, and they're out of it. By this time, the peasants have totally secured the weapons cart. You're driving around hog wild. You see the Commandante. He comes up out of some rubble, him and Colonel Chris, both. They, they like a cartoon, you know, the pile of rubble, and they come shaking their heads up out of it, see... Uh, the pans are moving around. One of them points at it like they're going to run towards it. What do you do, stink finger? Um, they don't need to run towards it. I'll take it to them. <laughs> That's kind of what I thought. And uh, once they realize what's happening, now a man can actually run much, much, much faster than a tank. Once they realize what's happening, they turn and just run in general. <clears throat> and that's what I wondered if you might do. And with that... Big projectile right up there as they rush off into the pieces of Colonel Chris and pieces of the Commandante just rain down over the whole village. <coughs> Confetti. <laughs> At this point, the few Mexican soldiers that are left ha are, are running. The peasants... Want they peasants begin to realize what has just happened, and they begin jumping up and down in celebration. Yeah, I'm, pop I'm popping up out of the hatch, well, and like a, a woman runs up and climbs up and gives you a great big kiss, and uh, everybody's patting you on the back, Charlie. And they they and where's my kiss? They get both of you guys out and put them up on their shoulders, and begin dancing around the village, celebrating. And, uh, and then you remember the crushed rubble, and uh, you see Andres, who's laying there, and he goes, Help me! I cannot move my leg! He's stuck under the big rock! Oh, oh crap! All right! Uh, hold on, ladies! I'll, I'll be back in a minute and show you why they call me Stinkfinger! I gotta help Andres! <laughs> 
Well, you guys get Andreas, and he he lives. He's he's going to be limping for the rest of his life, but he uh, he goes on to become mayor of Santa Cucaracha. Yeah, that probably pisses off his father-in-law. Yeah. Pisses off his, his father-in-law gains a newfound respect for him. Oh, that's after, good. After this, well, that's fair. I mean, he was like you know leader of a, a major revolution participant, right? Yeah. But meanwhile, immediately after the fight. Um, you guys realize that uh, you know the, the fortune you were going to get from selling those guns. That's probably that's probably gone now. But maybe uh, maybe there's some other the fortune rewards is in my heart. The reward is in seeing these people liberated. Uh, what a what a great note. Uh, I say if we're gonna, there's one Rolls Royce though, right? Oh yeah, been read off. In that. Well, when you guys go up to it, uh, and I assume you stay for the parties, this is dawn, you know, as dawn is slowly lightening the sky. Um, when you go over to the Rolls Royce, there's a. I mean, a, it's sunset or it's, it's dawn. dawn. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's close enough. Partied, yeah, it's close enough. Night, yeah, he partied all night. And there's a little valise case sitting in the front passengers of the floor in front of the passenger seat when you guys hop in. Do you want to open it? Uh, who, yeah, who's driving? Am I driving? I don't know. Uh, do either of us know how to drive at this early Heck, point? Neither of you know how to drive a tank either. No, that's, that's true. true. Well, I, but, well, I guess I have experience yeah. from driving the tank, so I'll more drive. experience than Charlie. <laughs> so I'll drive, and you can uh, open the case if you so desire. Well, when you open the case, you see there. Eureka! Bar after bar of gold with an iron cross stamped in each one. Well, gold is gold. German gold. As much as you can eat. Turns out maybe you get some other reward after all and just justice. And I think there we're going to leave uh, the wild, wild vest and uh, let let Charlie Branson and Stank Fingered Jones ride off into the sunrise. I only have one question. Do you go north, back to the States, or south? deeper into Central America. I suppose there's other revolutions that need to happen. <laughs> Sounds good. Alright, guys. Well, that's it for this episode, and next time we are going to play Shadow of the Demon Lord. <laughs> so we will see you then. Good night. Bye.